For instance, uh, the yeah, pictures we took of the liftoff sequence, uh, um, the, the little rocket with the smoke bombs, um, came, came out just looking absurd and completely unconvincing. We found using the computer that we could uh, push things a lot further in terms of uh, collaging elements and taking elements from different photographs and combining them and just making the photographs better. Uh, so the whole problem with this Tintin rocket, apart from the fact that it's uh, sitting on what's obviously a shopping basket with a squirrel trap next, next to it, was that the, uh, the horizon line's all wrong. The amount of detail on the rocket, if one tried to blow it up huge, was uh, completely lacking. Um, the actual smoke itself didn't look like the rocket was uh, impressively launching itself to the moon. Using uh, some more found sources, we managed to kind of build a better smoke. And using one of the ones where you could actually see a bit of the rocket, we got enough rocket information to put underneath. But Doing it this way actually made it look to scale. I think I got it. It only seems like children's logic. Uh, I don't yeah. quite know yeah. why. Kids hate but it. Having, so having had a, a child, yeah, no, they don't I get it. I can tell you, it's not really kids' logic. Yeah. Which direction? Facing that way. Okay. But I don't necessarily know what kind of logic it is. I, I suppose I see the whole thing as being a bit more absurdist and. Um, because it's absurdist, it, it seems to have a kind of a, a childlike quality to it. Take the shot now, Rich. It's, it's, it's adult in its meticulousness. The obsession, the deep obsession that goes into all the layers and the details is certainly very adult. Long, long attention span. Yes. Great, I heard it go. Perfect. This particular version we did of... Uh, Nicholas looking through the telescope and me shouting through the horn when we used them full size on the actual image with the telescope. Somehow it didn't look convincing to us. Uh, something was wrong about the outfits. We reused these two figures here as the little men. Which gives scale to the rocket, so the rocket Which seems gives huge. Scale, exactly. Richard called me in a panic how to make the scene work. He had just sent me the image. And I told him that taking those figures aside and putting them smaller might make a difference. I took the figures out of it and I also I put the figure of Nick behind the figure of me. Um, I took out the telescope and had them yelling up to the rocket. It started off you, uh, in terms of us uh, kind of photographing each other a lot, started off when we were doing paintings, when we would photograph each other a lot to uh, paint pictures of ourselves and had the, uh, the bonus effect of causing pain to the collaborator. Uh, I did a lot of portraits of Nick, and so we would kind of put on the costumes, yeah, photograph each other, unique, yeah, well, so does and, and paint each other. And it often worked out that those paintings were, were somehow more interesting. Uh, try looking up. Don't look at it. No, that's too much. It uh, makes more sense to look at it. We don't really mind if it, uh, yeah. what it yeah, reveals of ourselves, uh, if it reveals some strange aspect or mm, something unexpected, then that's good. Yeah, it, it, there was an amazing quality of being inside these dreamlike scenarios. Um, and ourselves always were, we were the most willing models to do some of the, 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 the most ridiculous okay, things. That's great. Don't smile, though. All right, okay, here we go. Ready? One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Okay. I need to breathe. A limited amount of air in the helmet. Oh, Snakes. Nose! 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 Ah, thank you. <laughs> I think people are very fascinated when we've photograph each other, just because then they, it kind of makes them think about the relationship we have and, um, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, we do invent this, this world and then we put ourselves 
directly into it as well. And that should be a perfect negative right there. You want to save the negative, then show me the positive? Yeah, I'll have to, um, I'll have to do a bit of Photoshop to get rid of the genes, but uh, yeah. you can see the top action is... Uh, also, uh, oh, yeah. I get to that right? play with going on eBay and finding clothes uh, from the 1920s and 30s, uh, which I get to wear in my regular life as well as in the photos. fascination with haberdashery. But may I have a, uh, well, my grandfather was a haberdasher, so thus I have a fascination with haberdashery. <laughs> Dapper, as usual, as always. Kind of role-playing the kind of costuming, going into another, a character other than myself and sort of living in a different time period. A dashing World War I poet. Poet turned... Poet turned rocket pilot. Rocket pilot, yeah. This or seems or something or strange or and wrong with shooting ourselves in our regular day clothes. Uh, once Costuming, once clothes, you're shooting yeah, people, is a huge part of the job. So I took on that job, I think, more naturally than Richard because he doesn't like to shop. I love shopping. I am not a fop. He is not a fop, but he's or quite a dandy. Happy. He's not a dandy, but he does like wearing the clothes, um, while I am a fop and a dandy. Um, so. uh, a good example is we'll be going out to shoot, and uh, in the shoot, the explorers will uh, so be supposed to have kind of uh, wandered off course and be uh, moments from death by starvation. And Nick will prepare for this by shaving <laughs> and slicking his hair back perfectly and making sure the outfit's clean. It's appropriate and for the Edwardian explorers. We're always quite dapper in the field. Uh, so I, frequently in the shots, you'll see uh, Nick expiring very elegantly. <laughs> while I expire in much more scruffy yeah. uh, style. And we both have our approaches. I'm ready for my close-up. That was beautiful. Does it help? Yeah. Good. Okay. How did we come upon this? Uh, 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 where, 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 where do we trace that source back to? It's one where little kiddies playing in the sand. Yeah, I think it was. There was a, a group of stones in, that made a fence in my backyard uh, that I'd spend most of my time sitting in those rocks imagining I was in some sort of... Uh, Kind of British prehistoric realm. Well, also tell about your brother. Oh uh, well, there was and the, the competing kingdoms. There were two kingdoms. Berg Reich. There were two kingdoms in the land. Berg Reich was his land, uh, and we made stamps for them. Um, Berg Reich and mine was New Conland, and uh, I had the stamps for New Conland. So I read a lot of Tintin uh, and boys' own adventure stories, which. Uh, there's a certain element of uh, when we do our stuff, acting out kind of fantasies and explorations that we always read about as children. Yeah, I was reading a lot of National Geographic. I, I found a whole mass of them when I was young, from the 1930s and 40s, and other sorts of old books. I remember going to a lot of garage sales and buying old books that had uh, photo pictorials of travel in all the parts of the world, and I remember sort of imagining myself up in, in, in the mountains of Himal Himalayas uh, in these stories and it goes back a lot to kind of those that odd time period. In Circular River, um, Ian and McBenden, these two characters that are sent by the Royal Excavation Corps to find this down glider pilot, um, they're, they're on a quest and they're on a, on a kind of journey or quest that's, that's not only physical as, as they travel to Siberia, but it's also psychological and emotional and spiritual. So here's a great image. Um, this is the mummy fields. And when I was looking at this the first time with Richard, he said, we only had one mummy, so we just kept rewrapping it, rewrapping it. <laughs> so it's very funny. We've always been interested yeah. in stuffing it full of everything Every possible. Every medium possible. So there's, there's been music sound effects we've been wanting to do as various parts of things. Some, it comes out more in others. It has to come naturally into the project. Uh, if it doesn't, then it would feel forced and wrong. When we were doing uh, paintings, we were completely obsessed with uh, Renaissance frescoes, which were frequently done in, uh, in such a way that the, the characters moved through the frescoes and appeared multiple times, and it's just a very natural format for uh, narrative. And um, we took a trip to Venice and we saw a certain set 